All right, so Rich, we're about to rank films that feature genius. Okay. We're gonna rank them. Now, the categories are S for superior, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. And all you have to do is oh, put Oh, these it, are grades plus A gonna, plus. I guess the S would be an A plus. Let's call it an A plus. Yes, and since F is below an E, F is really bad, because who knows what an E is, right? Okay. okay. The E is not excellent, E is below D. Oh. Where would you rate the movie Charlie, Cliff Robertson, in a role? Uh, that's an A, because of his special performance when he was uh, smart. I thought he was very effective. When he was smart, as an, as an actor, he, he had a whole different facial. Look to his eyes. His they eyes. twinkled somehow. Okay. I don't know how he did that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I'd give Charlie a B. Okay. Not because I didn't enjoy the movie or think it was important or have it have meaning to me at the time. I just thought it didn't fully explore what genius could be. Okay. It was a very narrow storyline in the okay. context of genius. Revenge of the Nerds. I'd give that a C. C. I don't know. I, I mean, I vaguely remember that movie, but I don't. They got even with everybody. I yeah, think. they got even with everybody uh, it was using so, their brilliance. I guess so. I just, I just, I don't remember much about it. So. Oh, okay. All right. I saw it, but I don't remember. Okay, I'm going to give it an A. Okay. Because they outsmarted the other people. It came at the exact moment where people learned that maybe being a nerd is cool. Okay. Before then, no one, nerves got wedgied by the football quarterback. Okay. And what happened in 1984? The Apple Macintosh gets released. All of a sudden, computing comes into your home, into your classroom. And the, the jocks Steve and all the Jock, beautiful people, yeah. if, Billionaires, they wanna do, if they want to do well on their homework, right. or on their, they need to be friends with the nerds. Okay. 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 So I view that as transitional. Okay. Okay. I was invited to give the commencement speech in the year 2000 for the Bronx High School of Science. Yeah. And I titled it Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> because all of a sudden, okay. the richest people in the world were the nerds. Not the oil tycoons right. or the steel tycoons. Right. It was the geeks right. who would have been rejected from all the party invitations. That's so true. I viewed it as an important movie Moment. in our culture. Okay, then. Even if as a movie, it might have only been a C. All righty, then. Okay. But I got to give it an A. Okay. Social, cultural importance. Cultural importance. Right. Okay. Let's keep going. Real genius. If you didn't see that, I'll just that. rate it. I don't remember that. Okay. S. Okay. Oh my gosh. I didn't say that. S. I okay. mean, think of Revenge of the Nerds, but a better film. I see. And it had Val Kilmer in it. Oh, uh, okay. And it's just some really smart kids just out of high school into oh, okay. Pacific Tech. Okay. Oh, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> Which school was that? <laughs> the Pacific Tech. Real genius was a celebration yes. of just being smarter than everybody else. Oh, okay. Look at how many movies are celebrations of people who are more athletic than everybody else. Right. Who are prettier or handsomer than everybody else. Right. This was a movie of people who are smarter than everybody there else. There you go. And I found one error in it. Yes. There are others, but this one was... Okay. Okay? There's a vending machine, and his friend comes in and sees him with this lab cutter... And he's cutting this cylinder that's the cylinder is smoking. And he says, What are you doing? And he says, Oh, I'm cutting nitrogen. So solidified nitrogen. Okay. Like, what is he doing? And then he gets a little circular disc out of it and he puts it in the vending machine. <laughs> he gets the candy out. I see. <laughs> that's good. I see. That's good. And the mistake they made was they said, What are you doing? He said, Oh, it's liquid nitrogen. Which, of course, it isn't. It's solid. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> so they messed that one up. But okay. just, so, so finally, being smart could be fun. Okay. Fun and irreverent, rather than weird and, and whatever else you might do with it. How about, do you see Goodwill Hunting? Yes. Yeah, what do you think of that? With Matt Damon as the janitor turned math genius? Uh, that's an A with some reservations. Why? Uh, well, I like the, f uh, it's a deeper movie, you know, yes, I it think. Is. Uh, this is, and, and the psychiatrist, um, you know, Robin, with, Williams with Robin Williams won the Oscar for that. And yeah. he was very good. And they explained his genius work in psychiatry, you know. And, and so the, the, the quibble I had was that the field medalist in the thing, he said, I am nothing 
this is Sarsgaard, you know. He said, I am nothing. This guy is, a, I mean, compared to this guy, I'm just Matt Damon. Oh, 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 I am oh, nothing. Oh, oh, My sorry, work is sorry, worth it. Sorry, the actor Sol Solgard, Sarsgaard, who was the professor who had field been a field medal winner, which you only win if you're younger than 30. So he's later in his career. Yes. yes. He, he, this is the, uh, the highest achievement in mathematics. Yes. I know Fields medalists, and I think they think their w work is important, but they're thrilled when they see somebody even better. It doesn't diminish what they've done, but for example, Roger Penrose came to Princeton one time. He gave a talk. He said, let me tell you what Stephen is thinking. This is Stephen Hawking. Okay. I mean, he's not going to give his own talk. <laughs> okay. He's going to tell you what Stephen is okay. thinking. So good people. So they, they can that. they can be good. They can feel great about the stuff they've accomplished, but recognize somebody of even greater accomplishments. So in this movie, they can be happy with that. They didn't interview enough field medalists to know how he, he would have behaved in that situation. I thought. Okay. Yes. So so that's you're going to drop it a score for that reason. Uh, well, I said an A with reservations. Okay, all right, A. I'd give it an A mm -hmm. because of the story was more interesting and it was richer, and it's a it's a townie. You know, if you're a townie, yes. no one gives you any respect. If you right. live in the town of a very right. highly respected university, right. in that case, it was Harvard, right? right? right. And you had the snooty Harvard students. Right. So I thought it captured that very well, uh, having seen that and, 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 right. and lived that. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Lucy with with uh, Scarlett Johansson. Where, how would you rate that? Love that movie, but it's crazy. <laughs> As you, say, you don't Just levitate crazy. things if you're, you know, <laughs> smart. But I, I, I love that movie. She needed to get an operation. She went into the operating room. She looked at the x-ray on the wall, killed the patient on the operating table. He's going to die anyway. You need to operate on me. She held him at gunpoint while they operated on her. I mean, she didn't feel the pain, you know. I mean, it was it was a fabulous movie. I'd, I'd give that an A. Would you give it an S? A plus? Well, it went a little too far. I'd give it just an A. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's break format here just for this one exception. Queen's Gambit. It was a TV miniseries would, on Netflix. I would actually give that an excellent uh, or a superior, yeah, you know, because as would I. Because they went to the trouble to get grand, world champions and things to produce the chess moves for the movie. They were real chess moves. Real chess How moves. How did you know this? Well, they told you. Okay. You know, if <laughs> later, you know, behind the scenes, oh, they okay. bragged about doing this. But you know, that was very authentic. Because they're all just Her, actors, and they just do what the script tells and them. And she practiced moving the chess pieces like she observed. The way professionals people, They move them fast and kind of, you yeah, know, they yeah, have a certain a style. There's a wrist action in There's it. There's a certain yeah. wrist action and a certain nonchalance about moving mm -hmm. them if you've played chess a lot. She studied that. And she right. is uh, Anya Taylor-Joy. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was terrific. So I agree. I, uh, this would be an S right at the a top. Superior, right. The top of the and line. And it was localized to being a chess genius. But yes. you, you, it still explored what that meant around people who don't understand you right. and what your abilities are. Right. And you got a, a little bit inside her head where you saw her play chess on the ceiling. I, I like to, to see a movie that tries to explain to you What's how they on? got this idea. Inside the head. And they rarely do that. No, they don't. Uh, how about Phenomenon, John Travolta? He gets hit by lightning and it gets really smart. I'd say that's maybe a B. CB. Okay. I enjoyed it while I watched it, but yeah. it didn't keep calling to me. Right. So I'm going to give that one a B because it was, I like John Travolta in that role. It just didn't stick with me that much. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Uh, there's some biopics here. Yes. Okay. So these are like real people who had sort right. of. Right. Uh, what do you think of The Man Who Knew Infinity? Math I, genius. I give that the top mark. That's an excellent. Yes. Yes, it's S for S. super. Super, super. yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, uh, Dev Patel and Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. I love him in anything, by the way. We interviewed Jeremy Irons after that movie came out. I know you did. Yeah, it's he's yeah. in our archives. Right, Star right. Archives. Yeah, I mean, I heard all these stories from uh, Littlewood, who was played by Toby Jones in the movie. It's a true story. It shows you also how hard Ramanujan worked. She was an Indian mathematician who was yes. discovered only when he wrote a letter right. to the University of Cambridge to Hardy, the mathematician. Yes, can yes. I come and work with you? 
Can I come work? And yeah. they did, and they did a great thing on partitions, which is the ways of summing up to a given number for very high numbers, and they made a big contribution to that field. And I might mention, I mean, the amazing thing about Ramanujan was they came up with these incredible formulas. You know, your man Newton, he came My up man. with an infinite series that uh, gave it equal to, to pi, okay? And the first term in his series, uh, the, the biggest number that appeared in the formula, he's got a lot of n factorials and things like that, in, but the, big, the num biggest number that appeared in the formula was six, okay? And the first estimate from the, just the first term was pi equal three, and then you add the second term, it gets more accurate. And each one, it converges quite rapidly. It beat all the old... You're talking about Newton's formula. Newton's formula. It beat all the old polygon formulas. Mm -hmm. okay. It was a, a new infinite series, new method. We use calculus. So <laughs> Ramanujan has this formula. <laughs> and he just presents it, you know. And it's an infinite series like Newton's. and it's it, But it's got these big numbers in it, like 26,000... 390. There's an 1103. There's a 9801. There's a 396. What are these? What do these numbers have to do with pi? What is this formula? And and the first term, the first term in his formula, is accurate to pi to one part in 13 million, <laughs> and then it gets better after that. And people were just astounded. But these things that he came up with. But you want to rate it high because he's smart? Or did the movie do a good job conveying? I think the movie did a good job of conveying uh, that. Well, yes. look, let me hold your feet to the burner here because you've got a beautiful mind. I give that a super also. You get it, see? Because uh, that was... And it also explained a bit how he thought of the idea. Yes, you get it. I like head. that. That's, and who's the, uh, we're talking about? Nash. There's Russell Crowe playing John Nash. Right. Now, my office at Princeton, when I postdoc there, when yes. we first met, yes. uh, John Nash would walk by every day. Right. I just see him walk by kind of staring right. up into the sky. I went to see them, them film the movie. Oh, yeah? Okay. And everybody was excited. Everyone wanted to see Russell Crowe or, you know, um, everybody was excited when the filming was there. And as I'm driving in, I see Mr. Nash walking, you know, out of the physics building, you know, I, I just see him on my way in. And when I got, I talking to some of the people at the concessions, I said, you know, I saw the real, <laughs> everybody's here to see Russell Crowe, but the real, meanwhile, the real Nash, John Nash is walking uh, about a block away from me. <laughs> it was a bit surreal. Uh, okay, so but let's, let's order these then. Let's take back your grade for the, the man who knew infinity. Okay? Yeah. Let's just take it back for a moment. Okay. We have the Man of New that. Infinity, Ramanushan. Right. We have IQ, also filmed at Princeton. Yes. Which portrayed Einstein. Right. Uh, Walter Matthau was in that, right. Meg Ryan. Then we have The Imitation Game. Yes. With Cumberbatch. Playing Alan Turing. Alan Turing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And of course, The Theory of Everything with Stephen Hawking. All of these yes. are true epic stories, movies, yes. true stories, mostly true stories with lead actors, like marquee actors playing yes, right. in these roles. Just rank them for me. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, let see. me throw in, let me add another one. Let's yeah. not be so science-oriented. Okay. Uh, uh, Amadeus. I think I might even put Amadeus first. I agree. S. S. Amadeus. Next. Yes. Among those. Now, I, I should comment that Redmayne's performance of Stephen Hawking captured his personality. It was great. Okay. I mean, they could have done more of explaining how Hawking got these ideas a little deeper. Which they didn't. But uh, I think his personality, and he did a terrific job, and he won the Oscar okay, for Okay, so that. let's put that at an A, okay, because yeah, you're right. ranking these. Okay. okay. Next one up. I guess I'd put Beautiful Mind ahead of an imitation game. So, so would I, I think. Because they explained how he yeah. thought of it. You, that, that made you feel for the character more, because you got inside his head. Right. Okay, then Imitation Game. Okay. Yeah. Do you know where Imitation Game comes from, that name? No. They didn't say it in the movie. They didn't? Okay. Yeah. His original paper. Oh. On... Is this about Imitation Artificial Intelligence? Yes. Oh. 
his okay. original paper okay. on the Turing test. Turing test, yeah, sure. He didn't call it the Turing test. He called it the imitation game. Right. Where you okay. interact with sure. the computer, sure. and the computer pretends it's a human and makes you think it's human. And if it can make you think it's human, that was counted as official AI. Turing did for computer stuff what Gerdel did for Math. mathematical. It showed there was computer programs that you, you couldn't call an algorithm that would say when something would end because you'd get into these logical self-contradictions. Did you, was, did you know Gerdel at Princeton? Did I you saw Gerdel. You saw him. I saw him. We he, had the same the, doctor, actually, but I saw, <laughs> at one point. But I, I, he was at the Institute for Advanced Studies. I saw him walking. Yeah. Okay. I, that's Gerdel. <laughs> okay. I was impressed. Okay. Uh, he did general relativity, the first time machine in general relativity. Did that wasn't even his main field. Mm, okay. He did the rotating universe that you could do time travel to the past. It was the first solution, 1948 that showed that general relativity could have time travel solutions. And then he kicked math in its ass after that. Well, I think he did that before. Oh. You know, he'd, already, <laughs> he'd already done that. Uh, all right, so where would you put IQ? I guess I'd sort of give it a B. I, I, I thought it was nice that, y you know, you can find somebody really smart in the gas station. <laughs> that okay. is possible, you know. Okay. But um, I thought it was charming. Yeah, but charming is not enough. To well, get so a high that's why I'm giving me. it a B. No, I see, I give it a C. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're I mean, sort re relative of on the to same these page. other biopics. Yes. Come on now. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I gave it a B. <laughs> I may be easier, or greater than you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, how about searching for Bobby Fischer? Uh, maybe that's even even the super category. Uh, it's it's uh, for this one great that line. Ben in Kingsley it. in it, right? Ben Kingsley is playing. The chess coach guru, and mm -hmm. I think your son studied with the actual yes, he had guy. Yes, my son, who got good at chess when he he had already studied with him when he right beat you. He beat he me. Played you in chess. Yeah. Okay. So so he beat you pretty quickly. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I have a photo of you just holding your head, like this, looking at the chess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so there's this one line in the movie that was just magical. He he's trying to convince the father that he should let his son be under the tutelage of him mm -hmm. because he, Ben Kingsley, wanted to see the next Bobby Fisher because he loved chess so much. He wanted to see what magical creations, just like you're looking for a work of art. He wanted to see what the next Bobby Fisher would be like. And he goes to the Manhattan Chess Club. And this is the best chess club in the country. And he, he says, now these are, over there is the American champion. Uh, over there is the Chinese grandmaster or something. And, and over there is this uh, grandmaster or something. He says, you won't find Bobby Fisher here. He's asleep at your home in the bedroom. Oh, and the father says, I'll sign him up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll sign him so up to also work a, with you. That's also based on a true story. Of a, it's a, a, a true chess story. Apology. And the interesting yeah. thing about that actual kid was that he got bored with chess after a while. He did not become the world champion, but mm -hmm. then he became a world champion in Tai Chi, this martial art. I did not know that. Which shows that he had a talent for devoting yourself to something. <laughs> to being good at and something. And getting to be the champion. <laughs> And there's a bunch of movies with that have kid geniuses, right? Yes. There's Matilda, that was fun and entertaining. There's yes. Baby Geniuses, that was a little <laughs> weird. That was kind of a fun premise, that yeah. baby talk can yes. be decoded into actually fully intelligent conversations right. they're having with each other. Right. Okay. I, I thought that was an interesting premise. But these are more sort of cartoony storylines right. than anything right. else. Right. But anyway, I think we ranked enough of them there. None were a D or an F. D, E, or F. No, I think yeah. people that take that project on as a challenge yes. are probably going to try to do a good job Do a of good it. job with the right budget and right stars. Right yeah. stars. All right. J. Richard got the third. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> You're Thanks great. Thanks for coming by. One of my great friends in the world. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, Neil. <laughs>